Okay, Dustin. Um, OSM to streets. Do you want to use that microphone or this one? Over to you. Uh, hello, I'm Dustin Carlino. Um, and this is work that uh, I also did with Ben Ritter and Michael Drugliever. Sorry, the light is very bright. Let me figure out how to deal with that. Um, yeah, so this is a project called OSM to streets. And uh, yeah, talk outline is sort of a standard format. Um, so yeah, I guess a bit of my background first. Um, uh, I come from the software industry, and uh, in but in 2018, I decided to sort of start a full-time project called AB Street. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's an open source software project that helps people redesign cities to move away from depending on cars. Um, and sort of a critical part of this project is uh, a lot of time the way transportation planning is done in places is the, the government sort of comes up with some plans and people might vote on it or have a little bit of engagement. Um, but I think that's sort of not enough. Uh, and so kind of one of my goals is to like engage people and engage everyday people in sort of collaboratively designing uh, the city that they that they live in and the way they move around. Um, and so, yeah, this, uh, this project, AB Street, um, is not really about mapping what exists today, which a lot of times is uh, roads that are very dedicated to motor vehicles, either storing them or uh, having a lot of lanes for them to go fast. But yeah, if I can get a bit grandiose, uh, AB Street is not about mapping what, is not just about mapping what currently exists, but is more about mapping what, um, the world sort of needs to evolve to in order to avoid climate crisis and uh, make sure people are, are uh, healthier and, and like have the ability to to walk and take public transit instead of depending on cars. Um, so this project AB Street attempts to interpret OpenStreetMap uh, lane tagging information in, in ways that are uh, increasingly problematic. So on the left um, is an example in Seattle and you uh, like looking at the default Carta rendering, you, you don't really have an idea of what's on this road. Um, but if you interpret the lane tagging, uh, you can see that there are bus lanes, that there's parking, um, and you can sort of see the, the width of the road and, and start to imagine other uses for, for that amount of space. Um, and yeah, so the import process in AB Street is, uh, has a lot of steps and sort of does a bunch of stuff to guess missing data, um, infer traffic signal timing, even like guess the number of parking spots uh, in a parking lot, things like that. But um, the, t the problems that I wanna talk about today uh, are related to sort of road geometry. So um, first, uh, OpenStreetMap, and I think like this is sort of a standard choice in all uh, GIS representations of street networks, like uses um, more or less a graph representation. And so what this means is a lot of times you have, uh, you sort of like treat the like segments of road in between every intersection. Um, you wind up with a lot of very short roads or like intersections clustered very close together. So this example, um, is in reality, it's, it's a four-way intersection, but it's slightly offset, and so this is called like a dogleg intersection. Um, but the the little piece, uh, there's like a, a small horizontal segment in between the two, um, the like north-south bits that is sort of modeled as its own road, and you have sort of two intersections modeled here. Um, and then sort of the second issue uh, with the representation in OSM is when you have things like dual carriageways, uh, where you have a like a one-way road split into pieces with some kind of median in between, these are mapped as separate objects um, pointing in different directions. Uh, and in this case, there's also like a, a one-way cycle track um, on either side of the bridge, and it's it's like a separate object as well. So um, why do people map this way instead of just mapping one object and having a bunch of tags on the uh, on the one road? There's um, quite good reasons for it. And uh, Martin from Cycle Streets gave a talk at State of the Map a couple of years ago, um, kind of going into detail here. Basically, like it, it gets very, like the, the string key value system gets in, incredibly complicated if you wanted to describe uh, big roads with you know bus lanes one in one direction, two-way cycle tracks on one side. Like it just sort of becomes a mess. Um, and if you split things in, into different objects, then it, it gives you a lot more freedom to express detail uh, when you need to. But uh, this causes a lot of problems for the stuff that I'm interested in. So one consequence, um, if I'm just if, if we're just trying to to render things with the level of uh, detail in the lanes, this is an example in Arizona with uh, like a streetcar line in between a dual carriageway. Um, so in this one like in reality, there, we're looking at one intersection, but um, sort of in the graph representation, uh, it's eight intersections, and then there's like ten small bits of road kind of in between those, uh, and it it causes some problems. So Kind of like the default rendering um, 
ethylene level of detail looks sort of like this, and you can see a lot of like really short segments of road in between the, the intersections. Um, this isn't great, but it's still, you know, like this, this still kind of works. It's not that bad, um, but it gets, it can get a lot worse. Uh, so this is in Bristol, and it's a case where the, the two different uh, roads in OpenStreetMap are mapped so close together that if you interpret the lane tagging, like they, they the roads physically overlap uh, and the rendering just sort of breaks down. And so like this entire um, intersection is just like a complete mess if you try to render it in this this level of detail, like this is just broken. Um, it also has consequences if you're trying to do traffic simulation. Uh, this is a dual carriageway with two um, two intersections close together. So if you have some rules about vehicles uh, not being able to sort of like a vehicle can't enter an intersection unless it's able to to fully exit it, so it doesn't block the intersection. Um, and also vehicles have a length, and so like the front and the back matters. Uh, you wind up with vehicles kind of getting stuck in the middle of these like weird blobs of intersection, um, and it makes the traffic simulation rules very very hard to work. Uh, another example is um, if you have this, uh, so th this is a cluster of like four intersections that are a traffic signal. If you want to reason about the movements that people are allowed to do with this traffic signal and try to say like generate or describe timing information, um, kind of by default, you can only look at one, like one of the four intersections at a time. And so you could, you could talk about the movements that are allowed through like the bottom right hand corner. Um, but that's that's like sort of meaningless. Like you need to treat this as one big object and like think about somebody uh, like turning left and going north, and you have to like talk about the whole object to 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 do that in a reasonable way. Um, so then another uh, consequence of the like the OSM representation is um, if you have some interfaces that let you uh, edit the the lanes that are on a particular road, um, this sort of breaks down. So on the right is a really awesome open source tool called StreetMix that kind of inspired. Um, all of the like uh, similar user interfaces that have, have come after it, where you um, you just see a cross section of one road and you can kind of drag the lanes around and adjust width and stuff like that. Uh, and so AB Street also has an editor like based on this approach. Um, and if you can see on the left, maybe I can zoom in a bit. Uh, nope, maybe not. Um, like we're editing only the the main road at a time, but there's a there's like a cycle track right next to it, and you uh, you can't edit that at the same time because it's it's just a different object uh, in the representation. Um, and so another uh, slightly more exotic consequence of the representation. So this is um, a uh, kind of a new tool um, in a piece of AB Street that lets you describe the area uh, in between the outline of roads. And so um, you can like use this to, for example, draw like neighborhood bound. Something a little bit un unusual about the way uh, to like union two polygons together. It's tracing along the, the outline of roads and intersections and uh, sort of based on that, like exactly producing a polygon. Um, and you can sort of merge adjacent blocks together by looking for segments of road that overlap. And like it's not doing this at a uh, geometry level. But anyway, um, this kind of thing has some some cool uses that I won't show. but. Uh, it also breaks down in the presence of weird geometry in OSM. So that crazy intersection we looked at in Bristol earlier, uh, you can see that the polygon is kind of like overlapping itself because the like the base geometry is weird. And so if you reason about road outlines, like they they just do impossible things. Um, and then if you have dual carriageways where there's some kind of space in between, uh, and here like this is a crazy example, you can see like the the road width just changes constantly as people are ma are, are tagging. Um, uh, like turn lanes and stuff like that. And actually like there's a lot of missing data about turn lanes. Um, but like this process then picks up a lot of the areas in between the the segments of the road, which is kind of strange. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so the like consequences of this representation, um, I've like showed a lot of examples from my own projects, but just to sort of demonstrate that like other people have this problem. Um, a colleague of mine, Robin Lovelace worked on a project called CIPT. That sort of looks at where uh, cycling infrastructure might be needed. And in one of their tools, uh, they say that the, the Blackfriars Bridge in London needs a cycle lane. Um, the problem is they've said that on one of the like the main road pieces of it, but there, there's a cycle lane like directly to the left. Uh, the problem is like it's very hard in, in any sort of analysis to like take what's in OSM and, and treat the whole thing as one road and, and reason about like does this bridge have a cycle lane or not. Um, it's just like very hard to do with the separate ways. Uh, and also, if you're writing a router um, and you care about how many traffic signals you're you're crossing, if you turn left in order to sort of cost things appropriately or give good directions, um, it gets really hard when you have dual carriageways and, and stuff like that. Um, 
And so I know it's possible to do better because uh, I think it was a little bit over a year ago, the Berlin OSM community, um, I think this was done by uh, Alex and like Tobias Jordans. Um, they produced this map that uh, if you haven't seen, you should you should check it out. It is the personally like the coolest map I've ever seen. Um, it's got like an incredible level of detail with uh, even just like pocket parking or, or like uh, parking that exists only on one part of the street. Um, you have stuff like uh, curb bulbs for, to make it easier for pedestrians to cross big intersections. Um, they just have this like incredible uh, representation that um, like this level of detail is, is exactly the sort of thing that I want to do, uh, but I want to do it everywhere um, based on OSM data. So, so how can we do that? Um, yeah, so for a lot of these problems that I've described, like you can imagine uh, there are workarounds to, to kind of get over, the, get over these problems. Uh, and I've sort of spent three or four years trying to trying to tackle these independently. Um, but I think now that the approach is is just to like find a new representation and and kind of like do heavy post processing and fix all of these problems at once. Um, and so that's what this project OSM to Streets is trying to do. Um, so just to give you a sense of how it works, uh, this is an example in Arizona. Um, it kind of started with just a a, a quick view of, in Leaflet of the um, of the OSM data that's mapped, uh, and then it transforms it into sort of this geometric representation. And you can see the uh, in the, the intersection is split into four different pieces. Um, and then at the bottom, it's uh, the video is sort of stepping through individual um, fa phases of this transformation that I'll describe. And so in this case, it's it's found a road that it's decided to merge. It sort of marks it. Uh, then in the next step, you'll see that it's uh, merged. And then after all this process. Um, you have at least one uh, one intersection representing the whole thing. The shape of it is really funny, uh, but at least now you can you can treat this intersection as one object um, in in later applications. Uh, in London, uh, that's mapped as a parallel object. So the sort of default um, initial import. The uh, the green cycle track is like physically overlapping the road, and it's actually kind of hard to, to even tell what's going on. Um, and so, as I step through some of these transformations, you'll see the you'll see things change. Um, so uh, that one just got rid of some of the intersections that, where the the number of lanes didn't change, and there's not really a reason to split the way uh, for the purposes of this representation. Um, and then here, the uh, the tool found um, is finding uh, individual segments of cycleway. Of separate cycleway, and then it's it's finding the the part of the main road that's kind of parallel, and it's looking at the intersection in between, um, and it's doing a bunch of stuff that I'll describe in a bit to sort of transform it. And so the um, the result is that you have uh, there we go a single object um, that describes the whole road. You have this this new lane that kind of is representing that there's some physical divider, uh, but you can reason about this as as one as one big thing with all of the lanes in place. Um, and this particular transformation doesn't uh, doesn't work everywhere. Like it, it doesn't transform all situations. And so um, at the end of this video, uh, over there's a section where the cycle track splits off in the main road, and it doesn't touch that part because it's not really appropriate to um, yeah. Like at the intersection, you don't really like it's it's different shape. Um, so the transformation doesn't do anything there. Uh, but yeah, so this is so OSM to streets basically takes OSM data, um, has a very opinionated schema on how to represent streets, um, and then does a lot of post processing to do that transformation. And so a little bit about the schema, um, more or less, it's it's roads and intersections. Uh, a road goes exa between exactly two two intersections. Um, it still has a center line like OSM, but it, now it also has sort of a, a total width, uh, so that you have a full a full polygon. Um, and then critically, there's uh, like a list of lanes going from from left to right. Uh, and right now, the like this is a simple schema that's going to get more complex over time. But the you have different types of lanes that uh, allow allow bikes, allow uh, buses and taxis. Um, you can represent stuff like uh, striping with different bollards and separation from traffic. Um, and every lane also sort of has a, a derived geometry that's like a, a thickened line string. Um, then at intersections, uh, these have a, a shape. Uh, like they're not just a point; they have a full polygon. Um, and the guarantee, well, the intended guarantee is that roads always meet the intersection polygon at a 90 degree angle. Um, and then uh, there will also be sort of a, a, re a representation of all of the possible movements through the intersection. Um, and there's a classification of intersection types uh, to to sort of tell you like is is 
this a real intersection where two roads are meeting or is it like a, a merge lane uh, or a highway entrance ramp, things like that? Um, so this representation is uh, partly a graph which could be used for routing. Um, but then more importantly, uh, like the edges of the graph kind of have this deep semantics and you can ask stuff like, is the cycle lane protected from traffic? By um, looking through the list of lanes, finding the cycle track and then looking left or right and seeing is that some kind of uh, separation lane? And if so, like what's the width and what's the type? Um, yeah, so uh, how is the pro project structured from a technical perspective? Um, everything in, inside the box uh, is a library written in a language called Rust. And so um, at a very broad level, you take uh, an OSM XML file, feed it into um, this importer process, and then you produce uh, some, uh, some structures, like the, the rows and the intersections, and you have kind of a library for, for working with them and transforming them in different, in different ways. And then one of the outputs of this uh, is the, the rendering that the, was shown on the leaflet map. Um, right now just expresses a bunch of GeoJSON layers, but like there's plenty of other choices here uh, to do. And then the, the slightly bigger picture. So um, the, the videos before were uh, an app in the web browser um, built on top of Leaflet, uh, and it's just like normal JavaScript CSS stuff. So that's the, uh, the Street Explorer box in the corner. Um, and then this talks to all of the Rust layer uh, because Rust compiles to something called WebAssembly. And so basically you can, you can pretend it's JavaScript and just call into this JavaScript library um, and so uh, the, in, the intention is like once some of this stuff is a little bit cleaned up, um, the ID editor could also uh, make use of this and use it for visualization or editing if, if appropriate. Um, and then also uh, Ben Ritter, one of my collaborators, is very interested in getting this um, into Java. And so we're going to make Java bindings and kind of do the same thing. Um, yeah, so at a very high level, the way OSM to streets works. Um, is uh, you start with raw sort of open street map data, extract a bunch of information from it. Um, and the first step is sort of to, to make OSM into a proper graph where uh, like a way goes between exactly two intersections. Um, and then sort of the, the magic begins when we uh, look at the tags for a single, single road and then transform that into this, this list of lanes from left to right. Um, and this is a, a this gets complex because like there's many situations to represent and like OSM tagging is, for lanes, uh, it gets gets really crazy, but um, the uh, yeah. So right now, there's um, like this is still kind of implemented as like one big horrible function with at least with unit tests. But uh, we have a separate project started called OSM to lanes, um, and I'll have some more information about that later. But that's uh, going to be like a very nice reusable library that solves this one problem of figuring out uh, for a particular way what are the lanes. Um, and then sort of the the meat of OSM to streets is a bunch of transformations. Uh, to fix different problems with the geomet geometric representation. Um, here's a list of some of the examples. There will be, uh, there'll be many more, and I'll walk through some of these um, in a few minutes. And then the, uh, like the last big piece of the library, um, once you kind of have that uh, representation of road segments and intersections that are just sort of uh, center lines and a point, um, there's a process that figures out how, or like figures out what's the, uh, the full geometry of the road and how do you take the road a bunch of roads that sort of meet at a single point of an intersection and trim them back and make that shape for the intersection. Um, and a while ago, maybe about a year, I wrote a long article uh, that has a lot of pictures that describes how this works in excruciating detail. So um, like I'll show you how to get to the slides later, but feel free to read that. Uh, yeah, so okay, so how do you use OSM to streets? Um, I think the, the first uh, use is that this is a new render that's gonna show you a lot of details about uh, individual lanes, and so this is a great. This is going to be a, a great way to validate lane tagging, um, and then also like the sort of dual to validating lane tagging is like when you spot a problem, how do you fix it? Uh, I think like yeah, the, the anecdote is like offhand somebody was was asking how do I um, how do I map a, a bus only lane that's like goes in the contraflow direction of a one way street, and I like had to stop and go read the wiki for a few minutes to answer it. Like I, I don't know. It's it's some of this stuff is uh, is not intuitive. And so another bit that I want to um, start building is just a, a very easy to use editor that lets you see the street mix style cross section view uh, of a single road and lets you edit that and it, it'll it'll generate the tags for you. That's another thing that's going to come out of this hopefully. Um, but yeah, so the, the uh, OSM to streets is sort of structured very uh, modularly. Like you can uh, use the web interface and just download GeoJSON files um, of the different layers, import them into QGIS and, and do whatever you want from that. Um, and then if you uh, are, are writing software using OSM, um, you can call into OSM to streets. Uh, the idea will be from, from any language, we'll have a nice API and good bindings. 
Um, and the goal and, and sort of my hope is like if you start using OSM to streets and making use of this, uh, a lot of the stuff, you're going to hit a bunch of bugs and a bunch of things that don't work. Um, and I like very much want uh, other people to be interested in this problem and, and kind of uh, join efforts and stuff. Um, and yeah, so if you are writing uh, against the API, roughly this is the sort of thing you can do. Um, you can import different files, uh, run transformations, get information about the, the lanes, uh, do different types of rendering, um, and maybe there's some other uh, features that I'll kind of go in at some point. Um, yeah, what I'll mention about the, uh, the design of it um, is that there's no databases or anything involved. The, when you run OSM to streets on a section of OSM, you just get a bunch of um, in-memory data structures. You can write these to a file, just a single file, and, and sort of uh, work with them later. Um, and so this means that like uh, deploying anything is not very hard. You, you end up just like hosting static files um, and that's, that's kind of all you need to do. Uh, so yeah, now I'll walk through some of the, the transformations that OSM to Streets does. Um, the first one is called, uh, I'm calling it the simple sausage link. So the, the sausage link, uh, oh, I see, okay. Um, yes, let's uh, breeze through some of this stuff. Uh, so yeah, there are details of how the transformations work. Um, and uh, I guess I'll show this one really quickly. So dual carriageways get really complicated. Um, this is kind of showing a, a, an example. Direction, sometimes you have roads connecting it. Like this is a very complex uh, example. Label all of the different pieces of it. Uh, and that's gonna hopefully make it easier to, to simplify this uh, very soon. Um, there's some stuff about how to write transformations. Yeah, so getting around to um, kind of the next steps, uh, things that I want to do. I, want, I, I mentioned that um, I want an easy way to, uh, to edit a single um, uh, road in OSM and sort of get the tags. And so this is like the world's worst JavaScript demo. Uh, and it like produces the, the diff and lane tags at the end. And there's like a million things wrong with this, but okay, I'm, I'm questions now. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I think <laughs> we're pretty sure the end you didn't quite see our five minute warning. Um, but these are the slides. Is that the final summary to find more information? Yeah. Um, URLs are hard. Take a picture or just go to osmdistreets.org and then uh, the slides are linked at the very bottom of the GitHub page and I can probably put that in a better spot. Great. Wonderful. I'll, um, hopefully people can see that. And um, yeah, I looked up the one of the Berlin map and shared a link in Venulus and that, that was wonderful. And, some of this OSM2 street stuff is really great. Um, so questions. Um, how is your work funded or who's behind this and, and your time? Yeah, um, so for uh, about three years after 2018, um, I was self-funded. I just, uh, I worked a big tech job and I had a lot of savings um, and I just wanted to do AP Street for a while. Uh, and then as of uh, December, I, uh, I moved to London and I worked for the Alan Turing Institute, which is a, a big like artificial intelligence group in, uh, in the UK. And they, uh, they now fund this work. Oh, brilliant, um, sounds good. Um, I think you can maybe answer this one um, in some of your end bits, but does, and hearing about how it's gonna help editors and influence that and being an editor was interesting, but someone did ask, does adding all this detail make it too difficult for new mappers to join OSM? Um, I really hope not. I mean, I think the experience right now, uh, if you're joining OSM and trying to map roads is, is complicated. Like just starting by drawing the center line and, and mapping like number of main vehicle lanes, I think is fine. As soon as you want to add more detail, like the cycle lanes um, or something like that, like it's, it's hard right now. You have to learn uh, all the schema. And so I'm hoping this will make it easier by making a, just a, a nice interface to, to look at it. Great. Um, did, did, did some more questions come in. Um, yeah, can you expand on the idea of doing these transformations tile by tile? Um, yeah, I haven't thought a whole lot about how to do this yet, but it is something that I want to try. I think the street network uh, like representation, like I think you could basically feed in tile by tile a chunk of OSM XML, uh, run this and get output, and then like there's funny stuff that happens along the edges where like you need to find roads that cross the tiles and and probably like merge them in some way. So it, it's possible. I haven't worked on it yet. If you're interested in uh, looking at this piece, then open an issue on GitHub or something. We can start it. 
That's right. And um, are people are voting on the one I was about to ask? Um, possibly the question of the conference this year, um, what changes to the OSM data model would solve the issues you encountered? Uh, if I had to vote for one change, instead of just string key values um, as tags, how about JSON? Because if we had JSON, you could have the one center line, or you could have the one object for a road, and then you could say, here are the lanes left to right, you could have a list, and each list is another, is, is string key values, and it's freeform tagging in there. But that one thing would solve many problems. <laughs> so more hierarchical tagging, I guess, rather, yeah, than, yeah. rather than when we do comma separated lists <laughs> as um, great. Shall we go for the last one? Um, it sounds like Google Sidewalk wanting to do something similar. Can your ideas work with their delve? I'm not sure on that last word. Um, okay. I think the the, uh, the person asking the question is maybe referring to the um, like there was an off uh, offshoot of Google trying to. Uh, do a bunch of digital twin city simulation type stuff in Toronto a couple of years back. Um, this is very different than that in a lot of important ways. And the most important one is that it's completely open and transparent based on open data. Um, and my understanding of that project is that they were not open at all about what they were doing. All right. Cool. So, um, but yeah, great what you've been doing and uh, great to share it with us. Thank you. There's at least one question in the room. I don't know if we have time or not. But... Mm, okay, we'll go. We'll go for one question there. Yeah. Can you go back one slide because there was a how you can? Okay. Ah yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. So I guess you are also interested in people looking and reporting very weird cases where it is not actually yet working, because I guess that uh, for most of people here they will be not uh, not going to program, but maybe they can look at their area and report what is going wrong. Is it this kind also welcome? Uh, yes. Um, so right now, if you if you go to osmdistreets.org, you can zoom into any area you want and sort of import um, and see see the result. You like, I promise you will find a million and one bugs. Um, feel free to report them on the GitHub issue. Uh, and yeah, like probably I, I know about many of the issues now, but um, by reporting them, I know what people are interested in. And then if you report them, also maybe I can rope you into into helping with the project in some way to figure out how to do this. But yeah, please please do report bugs. Great, cool. I'm going to leave it there. There will be more questions, but go find Dustin in the break yeah. um, and elsewhere and, and get him there. Cool, thank you. Thanks.